In the news today, Robinhood, everywhere Robinhood, turns out that it's actually a shitty app to use to trade or invest. Oh my god, what a surprise. Who would have guessed? Every single professional trader would have guessed. Like, we all know that Robinhood is a shitty app and you should never use it to trade. But for some reason, all the novices, all the newbies, uh, you know, tend to go to Robinhood. And I I'm not saying that to bash on anybody. It's just the truth. Now, if you don't know how it works, please watch this video because I'll explain exactly how what they're doing impacts you if you are trading on Robinhood and why you should not trade on Robinhood. And if you don't trade on Robinhood, but you want to understand how payment for order flow works and how HFTs front run your orders, I'm going to explain it. But yeah, before that, let's actually watch the news and uh, see what they're saying. Unicorn that makes it not so different from old school Wall Street. In October, Bloomberg reported that the company gets almost half of its revenue through a practice called payment for order oh. flow, meaning a company's oh. paying Robinhood to no. the other side of your trade on the platform or at least get the first right of refusal. It's a controversial practice, but commonplace among online brokers. It means your orders aren't happening on a public exchange, but behind closed doors in a dark pool. Some say it helps market efficiencies because companies invest in making faster trades. Others say it's just a way for high-speed computerized traders to skim off every trade, keeping markets opaque. So to understand what they're doing, you got to understand what happens when you send an order to your broker. When you send an order to your broker, your broker is usually responsible to send that order to the market. Now, if you're trading in the US, for example, there's a lot of venues uh, that your broker can send that order to. So there's several exchanges like New York, NASDAQ, Amex, but there's a lot of other venues where you can trade. They're called ECNs, but they act as exchanges. So there's hundreds of them. BATS, ARCA, NYC, AJ, BYX, Boston, there's a bunch of them. And there's a bunch of dark pools as well. So your broker now has the option to send to any of these exchanges, and his responsibility is to get you the best execution possible. He has to do that. Okay, so for you to have a little bit of a better understanding, I found this video here on YouTube uh, that shows price dissemination on, I guess, Nanex. Uh, and basically you'll see like for this stock, uh, there's a bid and ask on New York Stock Exchange. And the bid is 84.61 and the ask is 84.64. It keeps changing. But you have all of these other exchanges. You have B Batty, you have Boston, you have Edge, you have CBOE, you have uh, BATS, you have all of these uh, exchanges, and there's a different bid and ask at e on each of them simultaneously, and they all have to communicate with each other, and there's the SIP, which is gonna tell you the best bid and the best ask across all of them. And obviously there's uh, rules where you have to trade within the NBBO, the National Best Bid and Offer. I don't wanna get too deep into it, but basically there's all of these exchanges and ECNs, and there's dark pools that you can't see, and they form the order book. And this is what the order book is going to look like. So you're going to have all the buyers on one side and all the sellers on the other. Let's say there's the sellers here and at the same price, you're going to have sellers on different venues. So let's say somebody wants to sell on New York Stock Exchange. What is that? China Solar Limited. He wants to sell 1,600 shares. So that's 16 lots at 1148. But then somebody wants to sell on NASDAQ, only 1,000 shares. And somebody wants to sell on BYX, uh, 500 shares and somebody wants to sell on bats uh, 400 shares so you have all of these and arca so you have all of these ecns or venues so if you want to buy the stock at market okay and you send your order to Robinhood, what do you think Robinhood does well the the best thing they could do is they can send well they can give you the choice to choose which ecn or exchange you want to buy at now, the second best thing they could do is have a smart order router. So that's an internal router that they use to try to get you the best execution possible. So they might say, okay, well, you want to buy, you know, uh, 2,000 shares. Well, we'll give you, we'll send 1,600 to NYSC and 400 to BATS. So you get your 2,000. That might be a smart order router that they use, which, to be honest, uh, most brokers have stupid smart order routers because they don't care about your execution. They just care about the fees they get because different exchanges are going to give them different fees. But wait, wait, wait. That's not even what they do. They don't have a stupid smart order router because 
a lot of brokers have stupid smart order drivers. They're not even doing that. What they're doing is just selling your order to an HFT firm like Citadel. Why? Because they believe that this HFT firm is going to be able to get the best execution possible for you, even better than they would be able to. So yeah, let's just send that to them. They'll give us, they'll give you the best execution. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So let's actually see what an HFT firm would do when they get your order. So basically, if they're selling your order flow to, let's say, Citadel. Citadel gets your order to buy at 11.48. Well, what they do is maybe they know that they can buy it in a dark pool at the midpoint. So 11.48.50. So they get it at a half a cent better. So they sell it to you there and they get it at that lower price. Yeah, right. Or maybe they try to buy it for you on an ECN that pays them fees, right? So some of these ECNs actually pay the person who buys on them. For example... So I'm going to go here on Interactive uh, Brokers Fees page. So Interactive Brokers, way better broker, actually permits you to choose which ECN or exchange you want to buy at. So if you want to buy on Arca, or if you want to buy on EJ, or if you want to buy on BATS, or New York, or NASDAQ, or uh, Direct Edge, or whatever, you can choose. Okay. So if you want to buy on Arca, if you're adding liquidity, you actually get paid. If you're removing liquidity, you get charged. So in this case, if you're buying on Arca here and you're removing liquidity, you get charged. New York also charges if you remove liquidity. The only one here that doesn't charge if you remove liquidity is BYX. So let's actually check BYX here. If you remove liquidity, they'll actually pay you. So here, removing liquidity, they'll pay you. So if you wanted to buy 2,000 shares, well, you know what they would do? They would try to buy on BYX only. Why? Because BYX would pay them. But then if you want to buy more shares, they're not going to route there. They're still going to try to buy on BYX. They're going to post other places. So you're going to get a slow execution because they're trying to get executed and make money off of your trade. They're not trying to fill you at the best price. They're just trying to get executed at a good price for them or uh, get fees. Okay, so let's actually take a simpler example. Uh, let's take an example where you wanna buy at the bid. So you place an order at the bid and you wanna patiently wait to get filled, okay? Now, if you're trading on Robinhood, you probably wait forever to get filled and you probably only get filled when the price goes against you, guaranteed. Why? Because let's say, you know, you wanna place your order. Which exchange should you place your order at? Well, you should place your order on the exchange that charges to add liquidity. So the person who removes liquidity actually pays. Now, which one of these charges to add liquidity? Well, actually BYX. So uh, BYX here, if you add liquidity, it charges you and it pays the person who's removed liquidity. So everybody who's, so this one, this line, this queue, you can imagine it as a queue, is a queue that gets serviced really fast because everybody who wants to sell is going to sell on that ECN uh, because they get paid as they're removing liquidity and the person who was there is the one who's charged. So yes, you get charged a bit, it's very minuscule, but you get serviced fast. But if you post your order on somewhere like, let's say, uh, NASDAQ, well, you know what? If you add liquidity, you get paid, and the person who's removing gets charged, so nobody wants to remove liquidity from there. So uh, basically, if you want to get serviced fast, you want to get filled fast, you got to go on one of these cheap ECNs, we call them, not one of these rebate ECNs. Now, there's a conflict of interest, because the HFT wants to get the most rebates possible. So he's going to send your order on an ECN where you're less likely to get executed, but if you do get executed, you'll be the last person to get executed because people go there last because it's the most expensive place. So you're not going to get a good execution. But when you do get the execution, they make the rebates off of you. So there's a huge conflict of interest because you're always going to only get filled when the price goes against you. And you're never going to get those good fills where the price touches, touches your, your price level you get filled and then goes your way and you get out. No, you only get filled when the price really goes through you, not when it touches you. Now, I don't want to talk shit too much about Robinhood. Well, no, actually, I do. That's the point of this video. Uh, but a lot of brokerage houses sell order flow to HFTs. 
this is something that they all do it. They all do it. Uh, but the the funny thing about it is, is that not all order flow is equal. The first time that I worked professionally as a trader was for a company called uh, WTS, World Trade Securities. It was in Montreal 2012, I believe. And at that company, we were market making. So we would buy things just before the price would change levels and would sell them right away. When we sent our orders on venues like that, they would reject our orders. They would block us because they didn't, they didn't want our order flow because they were not able to make money off of it. They don't want professional order flow. What they want is retail flow. They want the stupidest, most novice traders that they can get. The more novice you are, the more that they want your order flow because it's easy money for them. And which broker has the most novice, most retail flow out of all the brokers? Robinhood. So this is what the news is about, right? The news is about the fact that, uh, and I've heard reports that HFT firms are bidding up to 10 times more for uh, Robinhood order flow than for other firms. Let's say you're trading with Jitney Trade. Jitney Trade is a brokerage house that caters for uh, professional traders. They're not going to want to buy their order flow because they know it's like professional traders are not going to make good money on them. They're going to make good money on you. So Robinhood taking money from the rich, giving to the poor is more like taking money from the poor and giving it to the HFTs. And it's, it's a funny thing because just five days ago, I have one of my students uh, on Udemy who asked me, uh, I need your opinion on using Robinhood free trading account. I started doing more trades, long shirt. Sometimes I see the price which I want to sell, but it's not getting executed. And later price dropped and I ended up in loss. Is it because they are giving free without brokerage? If I do more day trade, which broker is better? So like, it's something that is happening and you can like actually see, you can visually see your orders not getting executed correctly. Anyways, enough of this ranting. So I hope you guys do not use Robinhood. Stop looking for things that are uh, cheap in one area without looking at all other areas. It's a full package. It's your responsibility to make sure that you're not getting screwed and you're trading with a good brokerage and uh, you're not getting front run on your orders. Anyways, let's finish this video by going on YouTube and uh, looking at the best online brokerage. Let's just look at the first video and see what our if fellow it were easy to make money in the stock market, everybody be doing it. They're not rich, and you know there's a reason why. Grits, I'll put into Can't one even watch a video without this getting some of selling ads. course. Normally, it's $49, but Enough. today, I want to give it to you absolutely Stop free. It. Oh, you want to give it to us for give free? Give me your email address. Oh, Let me know where just I give me you your email? If you put oh these to work, God. you're going to learn how to make more oh, money, we're gonna learn how be, to more money? be more and have consistent, and new options Tell in life that you never knew you had. The stock market has changed my life. My family's lives okay, forever, life. they can do the same for you. Oh. So get started today. Get your hands on the Option Profit Accelerator. Okay. It's really simple. Oh, Enter it's simple. your email. Oh, it's really it, simple. Put it to work. Oh, it's you really simple. You can start making more money today. Oh my God. I want to die. Guys, stock trading is not simple. It's the hardest thing you'll do in your life. Anything where you can make a lot of money is going to be super hard. If somebody's telling you it's simple, Easy steps? No. Then go the other way. Then either they don't know what they're talking about or they're just uh, full of shit. It's not simple. If you want something simple, just stay in your house and don't try to be rich. If you if that's an objective you have, then trust me, it's not simple. You're going to put in a lot of hours. You're not going to be on the beach. You're, nobody trades from the beach. Okay. Nobody that actually makes money trading trades on a beach. I've been doing this for a while and I have not met a single actual trader that trades from the beach doesn't exist i'm sorry okay so i'm gonna stop getting mad uh but yeah i have no idea what this guy is gonna talk about it's the first video i hope he doesn't recommend uh, well, uh, welcome back Robin to the Hood. channel in this video we're gonna be going over the top five stock top brokers five. for 2018 number five first because Vanguard. i think that regardless okay. of what type of investor you are four oh, i've heard a lot of great things Where? about Basis. Interactive brokers. Okay. Uh, interactive brokers is number one for me. So he has it at number four. I can't wait to see 
what are the other ones and i haven't seen this video before by the way it's just the first video uh so we'll into see. penny stocks or even options trading right so now i've heard a lot of great things about this company uh i've talked to people all over the world okay so it hasn't used YouTube it but he thinks it's good um, okay overall brokerage firm uh, but the reason why i'm really putting it on this list okay. is due to the research capabilities on this platform yeah. so fidelity has one of the best research platforms and this True. is not going to be something that you're going to want to overlook oh, so a lot of people the our transaction fees for TD Ameritrade, you yeah. buy or sell yeah. stocks but i had to leave it on this list for one oh, reason and God. that's for the broker offers free trading which may sound kind of strange at first but Robinhood is a very legitimate brokerage firm with millions of investors using their services every day. So this is the one. It doesn't that, matter millions honest, or billions. It's not the number. Like, it's not like if a company has a billion uh, users that, oh, they're for sure not fucking the users. No, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't. Ah, let's go second one. Top three investing accounts. Stock brokers for beginners. Okay. Hi, my name's Petra Hess from PetraPix.com. Last year, I was able oh to make God, about $300,000 in profits trading oh, you US wait and Canadian stocks. And the what best part ads? of it was, so I was not chained to my computer all day. I was able to set my trades, control my risk, and leave my computer wow. and go enjoy my life. Oh. And I can teach you to do the same oh. thing. I've no way. this pattern to thousands of traders over the last decade. It's easy for you to learn. It's easy? I'm excited to teach it to no. you. No. Click the link below. Okay, you okay. won't be disappointed. Oh, Come okay. and join me in my webinar <laughs> and I will give you a very easy to learn pattern. Easy to learn? You'll be able to trade wow. as soon as we're finished. What are, what, are, what are we doing? How's it going today? Why do we work 12 hour days, go in the office on weekends when you have it all figured out and you can enjoy life not be in front of your computer come on hey guys i hope you're having a fantastic this is the day. problem with this so in this video here we're going to be talking about the best investing okay. accounts to open in two show us a 0.25 percent expense that? ratio for betterment digital all of these investing accounts down in the description below no, some of these here. are affiliate links but you do not have to use them however if you do free trading with no minimum account balance and so it's completely free investing, completely free trading for people in the United States. And the one thing I will mention is all of these brokerage accounts are U.S. only. I do apologize. I know a lot of people are interested in European brokerage. Okay, so the third one is not a recommendation. How online brokers work. Okay. Best investing apps. Oh, okay. 2019. So that's new. Hi there. I'm Jeff Bishop. I'm oh the co-founder of RagingBull.com. This guy again. So today in this video, we're going to be covering the top three free investing apps that you might be interested in. Okay, cool. Withdraw money from your M1 Finance account. They're going to automatically... So M1 Finance. A pie for you guys. Okay, and then the third and final app we have here is one that most people are familiar with. Most people are probably already using it. That is Robinhood. In my opinion, this is good for the beginner active trader, somebody who's looking to actively trade stocks on maybe a daily or a weekly basis. Now, if you're day trading, uh, I wouldn't day trade with Robinhood. You'll get in trouble with pattern day trader requirements. Uh, but if you're trading maybe once or twice a week or something like that, and you're a beginner, Robinhood might be a good choice for you. Okay, I give up. I, oh, Robinhood, whoa. It's, oh my God. I don't understand why these, you know, online traders recommend that. It's like they either don't understand how the microstructure works or they're just oblivious about something. Because if you read any books from like any, let's say you read the book Dark Pools, they talk about this. If, if you read uh, Flash Boys, they talk about this. If, I don't know, like it's, it's not like unknown information. Okay, guys, so enough ranting. Uh, it's getting kind of late. I'm off. So let me know if you like this video. Smash like. If you hate Robin Hood, smash like. If uh, you like Robin Hood, uh, smash subscribe because I'll convince you later on to stop liking them. And let me know down in the comments what you want the next video to be about. And I'll see you guys next time.